Do these 15 things as soon as you activate your brand new iPhone 15 or 15 Pro or 15 Pro Max and make your experience even better. Let's go. First things first, head over to settings, camera. Then you need to turn on Pro Raw and resolution control. If you have the regular iPhone 15, this menu will be called just resolution control. In case of the regular iPhone 15 and 15 Plus, this will give you a new button in the camera app, Heath Max, that you can turn on or off. When you turn it on, it will make the phone take 24, 48, sorry, megapixel photos with all the processing, which is quite a bit better than default, 24 megapixel shots or 12 megapixel shots. On pro iPhones in camera settings, you need to click on pro default and choose either one of three options. Heath Max takes 48 megapixel shots with all the processing and each photo weighs around 5 megabytes. Pro Raw 12 MP and Pro Raw 48 MP take raw photos with a ton of detail, color data, all without processing and the photo weighs from 25 to 75 megabytes. Then in the camera app, you'll see a very similar button that you can tap and hold to reveal a menu where you can change between these three modes. On regular iPhone 15 and 15 Plus, I recommend turning this Heath Max on or off depending on what you're shooting. If it's a wide landscape, turn on. If it's a daily shot of a coffee mug, turn it off. This way you'll have enough flexibility in the quality of your photos without them taking too much space. To make the camera even better, be sure to turn on level. To do this, you'd want to scroll down while you are in the camera settings and tap on the toggle for level in the composition sub menu. After that, you'll see a special line in the middle that indicates how level your phone is and turns green when you hit the sweet spot. And while you are in camera settings, I recommend to also turn on the grid to make framing the shots easier. These are really small things that can make your life easier and photos better. If you have the iPhone 15 Pro and Pro Max, this setting is for you. As you know, the Pro iPhones now have two additional focal lengths, 28 and 35 millimeters. These equal to 1.2 and 1.5 magnification and work in an interesting way. It's not just a cropped image. Apple uses algorithms to imitate the focal length as it would be on real lenses. But not everyone needs needs three options at all times. So head over back to the camera settings, main camera. Here you have an option to turn these lenses off and choose a default focal length. For some people, 1.2 would be preferable, while some would prefer 1.5 as their default focal length. In this case, by switching one toggle, you can turn off the focal length that you don't intend on using. In the camera app, the options that you turn off will disappear. So if you want, you can make it a standard camera with 0.5 x, 1x, 2x, and 3 or 5x magnification without these extra focal lengths. I promise this will be the last one about cameras, and it's also only for the owners of Pro iPhones. As you know, new Pro iPhones can shoot log, ungraded ProRes footage, so now you must make sure it's turned on. To do this in the same camera settings, go to Formats and enable Apple ProRes, then click on Encoding and choose Log. Then in the camera app, you'll get a new button called ProRes. Tap on it and turn it on. Now your iPhone will record high quality flat log videos that you can later color grade to your liking. Now let's take a quick break and talk about this video sponsor, Private Internet Access VPN. Ever thought about using a VPN for online safety? I'm using Private Internet Access PIA and it's changed how I use the internet. The VPN creates a secure and encrypted connection over the internet, protecting your data and online privacy by routing it through a server in a location of your choice. So Private Internet Access protects you from the hackers in internet service providers and others that can view your personal data. It's so easy to use, you pick one of their servers located in more than 84 countries and in one click, you're good to go. It runs on all the standard operating systems, Windows, Mac OS, Android, Linux, and iOS. A single subscription protects all your gadgets all at once. I have a lot of trust in PIA. Why? Well, they got a track record. 30 million downloads strong. They are also a go-to for streaming. Want to unlock a show from abroad? Easy! That's my main goal for having a VPN. Unrestricted TV watching. Are you into P2P file sharing? PIA's got your back. And if you are on the fence about whether it's the right fit for you, they offer a 30-day money-back guarantee. Plus, they have customer 
customer support available around the clock if you have any questions. For me, picking PIA was a no-brainer, and if you're curious, use my link and snag an 83% price cut. You will also score four extra months at no cost. It's a killer deal for a top-notch VPN, and now let's get back to the video. Okay, after we're done with the cameras, I think we should customize the new action button. And if you have the regular iPhone 15, 15 Plus, you better stick around because I'm gonna show you how you can get all the action button features without paying a dime. So take your iPhone 15 Pro and go to settings, action button. Next, you'll be taken to this menu, showing off all the things that the action button can do. Turn on the flashlight, starting a voice memo, opening the camera or magnifying glass, muting the phone or entering a specific focus mode. There's also an option to set it to any shortcut. And as promised, for the owners of the iPhone 15, there is a workaround. Go to accessibility, touch, and scroll down to back tap. There you can choose an action that the iPhone will perform on a double or triple tap. And let me tell you, the list of options here is far longer than the one for the action button. Alongside classic flashlight and camera, there's also notifications, lock rotation, even shortcuts. You can add any shortcut just like with the action button. And the beauty of this method is that you can have different shortcuts on double and triple taps. Action button, however, recognizes only long press. Now let's increase charging speeds. There are a few cool battery features, so head over to battery settings and click on health and charging. There you will see the charging optimization menu, click on it and choose none. Now the iPhone will use its full charging power and charge as fast as possible at all times. Yet this feature has one downside. It may cause a slightly faster battery degradation. So unless you really need faster charging, I'd recommend setting the battery optimization to optimize charging, where the phone itself decides when to charge fast and slow, or you can choose to charge the battery only to 80%, which surely will help to preserve battery health for longer. After that, be sure to check out the cycle count of your iPhone's battery. Yup, now you don't need a third-party app or a shortcut command. Just open settings, about, and scroll to the battery section. There you should see the cycle count. This is right now available only on iPhone 15 and 15 Pro models, but I'm sure it's gonna migrate to older iPhones too in the next few iOS updates. The last thing you might wanna do is set up an automation to better preserve the battery of your new iPhone. And all the automation is done in the shortcuts app. This shortcut will automatically turn on low power mode without asking when the battery charge level falls below 20%. In the shortcuts app, tap on automation in the bottom menu, add automation. Next, you must choose what's gonna trigger the automation. In this case, it's battery level. In the menu, you'll have to select the exact charge level that's gonna trigger the automation. As an action for the automation, you need to choose set low power mode to on. As an additional action, I think it's worth adding turning off the always on display. In the search bar at the bottom, look up always on and choose to turn it off. And boom, now every time the battery level falls below 20%, the low power mode will be automatically turned on and always on disabled. If you want, you can take this automation even further and make it disable Wi-Fi and cellular data, send a message to someone and so on. Here's a quick tip from me. Add this automation to enable the fast charge when the charge level falls below 20%. This way, when you put the phone to charge, it will charge as fast as possible. And don't forget to add a counter automation that will turn all of these features back on when the battery charge reaches 80 or 90%. Now let's improve the security of your iPhone because not many people pay attention to setting it up correctly. Go to settings, face ID and passcode and turn on require attention for face ID. This way the iPhone will not unlock until you look at the the display. This way, if someone takes your iPhone when you're sleeping and tries to unlock it, they won't succeed. All your secrets are safe now. As an additional small thing, turn on attention aware features, which will make the display turn off and dim when you're not looking at it. Another security related change is turning off access to things when the phone is locked. In the same Face ID settings, scroll down to allow access when locked, then just turn off as much as possible, especially the control center and Siri. This way, if someone 
someone steals your phone, they won't be able to turn off mobile data and location services, which would make it slightly easier to recover it and bring justice upon the perps. The next thing to do is to throw out all the lightning cables you have. Well, I'm joking, of course. Throw out only damaged ones that don't work as they should. You have type C now, so you better stock up on those. Next up, it's time to create a contact poster. To make a poster, go to contacts and tap my card, then choose contact photo and poster. For a new poster, pick main image from your photos or snap a new one. You can also use a emoji. You can select the font of your name, color, and the information that everyone will see. It's really easy to set up. After posters are done, be sure to download some offline maps if you use Apple Maps. Search for the area you want in Apple Maps, tap the download button on its info card, adjust the frame to cover the area you want to download. The app will show how much storage you need. Tap download. Boom. Easy. So do these 15 things and your new iPhone 15 will become 15 times cooler and better. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one. Air drop.